All right, what's going on today, YouTube? Welcome to your favorite cyclist YouTube channel today. Today, right behind me, I got the dirt jumper. Today, we're gonna be learning how to bleed your avid brakes. I believe you have avid, avid juicy five or juicy fives or threes on the dirt jumper. Uh, so I'm gonna show you the procedure to bleed those brakes. But first, if we turn you around here, you actually know something is missing. If you've been around since I started my channel, you've probably seen a couple videos where I've aimed this way and there's something missing yep they cut down my huge huge trees out here my huge breadfruit or ulu trees out here um so yeah i'm going to show you something cool so i'm going to walk you down over to the bottom here all right so like any mountain biker would normally think here what can i do with this i don't know if you guys can tell how steep that is but it's a pretty steep hill but yeah, I am thinking of doing something here. Uh, either building a feature or riding away, finding a way down. Uh, that's just cool. So I'm gonna post a link up above um, for a poll. If you guys think I should build something cool here, hit yes, and then post below in the comments. Let me know what you think I should build here. I'm thinking something cool. But if you also think no, post in the comments why you think no or what you think I should do instead because I think this is going to be a pretty cool idea. But anyways, we're going to get back up to the bike and we'll get working on our brake bleeding. All right, I lied. I don't have Avid Juicies. I have Avid Elixir 4s here, or I have one. The rear one, I did. it's a long story. I'll go through that one other day. But the problem I'm having is my brake lever should stop halfway, but instead it goes all the way to handlebars, and it will not stop me anymore. So there is definitely some air in this system. Uh, if you haven't had hydraulic brakes before, Pretty much this is a sealed system here. Uh, it should be fluid all throughout, and that's what pushes from the lever down to the caliper and causes your brakes to activate. Um, obviously, there's some air either in the lever, in the in the line, or the caliper, or all of them. Most likely going to be all of them. Um, I bled these brakes a couple times. I got them pretty good once, um, and then they've just kind of gone downhill since then. Um, I've changed the pads. I think I just changed the pads on the rear when I rebuilt this. So. So anyways, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to try to get all the air out of here. I'm going to show you guys what you guys need to, to do this task. And then we'll get started working on it. All right, so tools we're going to need for this for this project today. Um, so first thing you're going to need, anytime you're bleeding brakes, you're going to need a bleed kit. Most of the time, it's going to include a couple syringes. Um, for the Avid, Avid kits, it includes two syringes. And then a, this is a T10 Torx bit in there in order to loosen up your... And the screws in order to screw those in. Um, so that's what's included in there. With the Avids, you are going to need some DOT, um, DOT 5, I think it's 5 or a 4 brake fluid. Um, I've used this 5 for a while. It works fine. It works great. I actually got it with the bike, so it works, works good. Didn't have to spend any money on that. I'm going to need some Allen keys, just based on what size your lever bolts are. Um, you're going to need to rotate your lever while you're bleeding the brakes. And then you need either a rubber band, a toe strap. Um, I have a hair tie for my wife, one of her old ones. And you just have to use one of these just to hold the lever down during the bleed, during the bleeding process. And of course, right here, if you guys haven't had, if you guys work on your bikes and you don't have one of these, um, highly recommend getting one. This is the Big Blue Book of Bicycle Repair by Park Tool. It's actually the second edition. I have a third edition now with more more information and some of the newer newer tech in there. Um, highly recommend getting one of these if you plan on working on your own bike. It has so much help in here. I'm going to post a link in the description below. Take a look at that. Highly recommend getting one. It's going to help you so much while you're working on your bike. I'm going to be referencing this today in order to make sure I do all of the processes correctly make sure I can get my brakes the best I can. All right, so first things first, if you have sensitive skin, highly recommend wearing gloves. Brake fluid does sometimes affect your skin if you got, you know, some sensitive skin. For me, I'm just used to it. I've done brakes on cars, brakes on bikes before, and it doesn't affect my skin at all. All right, so first thing you're going to do, you got your one syringe here. Notice you have your clamp here on the on the tube hanger, so you want to make sure that is loosened up, not clamping down on the hose. I'm going to go ahead, get this down in here. We're going to fill this one. I believe it's about halfway. It's a little bit more than halfway. Let's see here. I'm going to fill it about halfway full of fluid, just like so. And we're going to clamp it down. All right, so you got that all clamped down there. So what you're gonna notice is at the top here, you're gonna see a whole bunch of bubbles there. 
you're gonna see a giant air bubble. So that is something you do not want in your brakes. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna undo that clamp. I have my bin here of fluids, so I'm just gonna unscrew this. You don't wanna, this is pollution, you don't wanna do this. All right, so you got this. You're going to want to push out that bubble the best you can. Inch it closed. And then you're going to pull it, and then you're gonna see all those bubbles that just popped out there. You're gonna get those bubbles, try and tap them all to the top. You wanna to gently pull back on the syringe. You don't wanna break it. So you just wanna kinda of tap the syringe, get all the bubbles to the top. You can see you got a little bubble right there. So you're gonna do the same thing. Uh, bubbles hanging around, it doesn't wanna go up to the top. All right, so you got your one syringe all set with fluid. So that one's all good to go. I'm gonna put my cap back on here. This thing kinda stinks. I don't quite remember what's in it. I think it's coolant right now. I think it's coolant, a little bit of oil. All right, then we're gonna move over to the bike here. So you got your, your lever up front. What you're gonna do, you wanna make this a lever. You just wanna loosen these bolts up. You're gonna be moving the lever a couple times during the bleeding process. You just wanna loosen them up to the point where you can actually move the lever you know, fairly freely, but it's gonna stay in place when you move it. Let's see here. If you live in a rusty state, I feel you. <laughs> there we go. That's pretty good right there. Able to move it around. Like so. All right, cool. We got that lever all set there. Next thing you want to do, um, so you get your lever up front here. Your caliper is going to be on the back of the bike, uh, right down there on the back. So if you have your bike up on a work stand, you want to make sure that your lever is above your caliper. This is going to be the highest point of your system. You want to make sure this is the highest point that you're pushing all the air bubbles out of. So for me, caliper is below the lever. Obviously, it's flat on the ground. It's going to work for me. If you're on a stand, tip the bike so it's level or tip it so it's higher. The higher this is, the better it is. All right, so then we head down to the rear caliper. One thing to make sure, um, your bleeder screw is going to be a little small, T10 um, bit. Um, first thing you want to do, you want to make sure these are both open. You can crack both of them open. Um, I checked the front one already. The front one was pretty stuck. So, um, go ahead and get your filled syringe right here. Get that ready to go. We're going to do, we're going to loosen this little screw here. Your bleeder screw. Make sure you do not lose that. And then we're going to get our, cat, our syringe here. And we're going to thread it on there. Just like so. Come on. Right. Nice and easy there. Make sure you keep it clamped here. Do not open that yet. So this one's all set. Awesome. Again, make sure you don't lose the little bleeder screw. Back up at the lever here. Um, got the full syringe on the back. Got your lever. Are you going to tip it down vertically there? Just like so. All right. Now we're going to. I actually don't think I'm going to get the syringe on at that point. All right. There we go. Now you can get it on. All right. So we're going to get it pretty much vertical right there. Get your rubber band, toe strap, whatever you have. Pull the lever all the way back. There's air in there, guys. <laughs> Enough air to shoot my syringe off the back. Okay. To get a rubber band, go ahead. You're gonna make sure that your cat, your lever goes all the way to the bars. If it doesn't go, you gotta adjust your lever position. So if you got like shorter hands or longer hands, you know, whatever. You gotta make sure it is up against the bar there. Once you got that set, get your little Torx bit here. Again, this is the one that caused me a pain in the butt. So what that does, holding that, holding the lever against you, actually closes the cylinder and the lever. And so it makes it so everything is all sealed off on this side. So then what we're gonna do, I'm to remove this bleeder screw. Again, don't lose it. It gets a little dry in there. Okay. You remove that. Get your empty syringe here. I'm going to get this here. And we're going to thread it on here. Alright, so that one's good there. Go ahead and open the clamp on that syringe. Pretty much what you're going to be doing, you're going to be actually forcing air, forcing fluid from the rear caliper 
all the way up to your front lever. So you want that one open to be able to accept fluid at this point here. All right, so we're back down at the caliper here. Um, so this next step is pretty much going to be bleeding any air out of the, uh, bleeding, bleeding any air out of the caliper here, making sure that there is no air in this system. Um, right now the master cylinder is already sealed off of the caliper, so I have that rubber band on there. Um, so right here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and open up the clamp on the syringe here. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna very gently pull back. And if you look very carefully at the syringe, you can see bubbles coming out. That means there's air in our caliper. You wanna be careful, you don't wanna pull too hard. Otherwise you potentially let air into your caliper. Look at all that nice air coming out. No wonder it didn't work. Pull it again. Until you don't see any big air bubbles coming out. And you want to make sure you have the caliper t or the uh, the syringe pointed up. That way all your air bubbles are going to the top and they're not going to the bottom. They're right back into your right back into the caliper. That actually looks pretty good. Just want to clamp that down, seal off the syringe here. So that's all good. I didn't see any air bubbles. Pretty much want to keep doing that. I don't see like very much air bubbles at all or none, uh, you know, ideally. But that should be good for right there. Didn't see anything coming out. So that is good. All right. So next up here, I'm not gonna be able to get everything because I have to be in two places at the same time. We're gonna come up here. You're going to do you're going to take off your strap or your rubber band up here so it's going to open the cylinder up and then what you're going to do you're actually going to hold this one this clamp is open you're going to hold that up and you're also going to hold your caliper one up we're going to end up doing you're actually going to end up pushing fluid from the caliper up to the lever that's going to try and get all the air out of the lines as well as the lever so that's what we're going to be doing i'm going to have you guys down at the caliper end so you can just see me do it down there um, but yeah, I'll show you guys up at the top, show you guys all the fluid that came out um, once we get it all, all set. All right, so we're down here at the caliper. What we're gonna do, we're going to open this clamp here, and then we are going to slowly push fluid through here. Slowly push fluid through here. Oh, I see it's starting to come out up at the lever, which is good. Starting to go into the other syringe up at the top. All right, so we're starting to fill up up there. You want to fill up about halfway up at the up at the up at the lever. That is just about halfway right there. Okay, without dropping this, flipping it down. You want to make sure you close off your clamp here. All right, so that one's all good there. All right, so all the while you want to make sure your the one at the lever is staying nice and vertical. You don't want to let a bunch of air right back in. So there's definitely some air in there. I'll show you in just a second. There's definitely a bunch of air in there. So you do not want to let that flip back and fall into the system. All right, so we got our little bleeder cap here. What we're going to do, we're going to unscrew our syringe here, just like so. And quickly put that in. Screw that all the way in. Tighten that thing down. All right. So that is it at the caliper there. All right. So we're back up at the caliper. Or sorry, not the caliper, the lever. So you see I got about a halfway full. Um, didn't run the one low. This one's good up here. So what you're going to do, you're going to do the same thing you did down at the caliper. I'm going to very nicely, gently pull up to try and get any bubbles out, we can, any air bubbles we can out. Again, you want to make sure you have this pointed, you want to make sure it's pointed vertical so you can keep everything in. And then what you can also do, you can slowly, slowly work the lever to to force out any other bubbles as well. All right, so what we're gonna do from here, we're going to rotate this so it's level now. Level with the ground, well, so like so, it's just about level. Now what we're gonna do, I'm going to get your bleed, oh, make sure that stays level. And grab our bleeder screw here, 
sure we got that all ready to go. Okay. What we're going to do, we're going to... Oh, stop moving. Okay, we're going to very carefully remove our syringe up here. And with the Avids, you want to push in just a little bit of fluid, like a drop or two, into the hole. And we're going to go ahead and get our bleeder screw, tighten that sucker back up. Tighten that right up. Get that there. All right. Just got all that set. Make sure you wipe down around the lever and your caliper. This it is. It will eat away at your paint if you have nice stuff. I don't have nice stuff. But it'll eat away if you have nice stuff. Other than that, I think I should shoot my pads. <laughs> it feels better. I think it's actually my pads that I've all over. I think it's actually my pads. But that's how you bleed it. Okay, let's wiggle this back into place here. All right. Get back into your normal riding position. Which for me is right about there. Tighten up your bolts. Cool, so you got your lever all set. It does feel better, but uh, uh, I think it's actually my pads that are the issue. Make sure you check before you <laughs> go through with beating your brakes. Hey, your pads aren't just worn out to junk, that they're actually, there's actually still pads left. Yeah, it feels better, so. I need new pads. So yeah, guys, that's gonna be how you bleed your Avid Elixir for brakes. As you probably see, my lever still goes to the bars. Um, I actually looked and I need pads. Uh, my pads are pretty much non-existent on the back here. I didn't change them out when I thought I did. It's actually been a couple years since I changed them out then. So, need pads. Other than that, I mean, it does feel better. It grabs a little bit sooner, which is better. So, so it's definitely gotten better. Um, there's definitely a ton of air in this system, which is getting better right here. Yeah, so there's definitely a ton of air in there. Pretty simple process. Um, I'll put, again, I'll post a link in the description below to a uh, brake bleeding kit for these brakes, um, as well as the proper brake fluid, and then my Park Tool Big Blue Book of Repair. Uh, so you guys can do this yourself, learn how to do this, you know, if you're more of a written person, you want to read a book like I do. Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this content. Uh, definitely got some great stuff coming to you in the future. So make sure you comment below what you think I should do with my yard where my tree used to be. Let me know if you guys want me to make a, you know, I don't, I don't do drops, but make sure, let me know if you want me to make kind of a little trail there wooden feature, you know, something cool there. Um, definitely interested in doing something like that. Otherwise, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching today.